Hello, everyone. This is Al Fadi, and I want to welcome you back to a continuation of this fascinating series about Mecca. And really, we are continuing our search for any evidence that convincingly will corroborate the standard Islamic narrative when it comes to Mecca, its location, its geography, and its topography, its vegetation, its archaeology, and the list can go on and on and on. What do I mean by that? The Quran paints a imagery and descriptions of Mecca that reality does not actually confirm. By the way, I grew up not that far from Mecca. I've been to Mecca many times, so I can tell you this. Indeed, when you go to Mecca, you're not going to find not even half of what the Quran is saying concerning Mecca itself. This is why someone like Dan Gibson, for instance, we are so thankful for his research when he came up with the Quranic geography. Uh, everybody was basically trying to attack him for daring to point the obvious that if you really want to find where the geography of the Quran fits, it's Petra or at least north rather than to point down south to Mecca. And that's what we're doing, myself here and Dr. Jay Smith, who is with us here in studios. And we're so thankful for his research and his team's research and thankful also to have this honor and the opportunity to be able to present it to you, to at least our subscribers, our uh, viewers, because we want this knowledge to be expanded beyond just uh, Dr. Smith's channel. That's why we encourage you, take this from his channel, from my channel, and spread this wealth of knowledge everywhere. We encourage you actually to go ahead and share these kind of videos within your own network. These are powerful, powerful basically video series that are intended for one reason, to show that the standard Islamic narrative have lots of holes in it. And the hope is that our Muslim friends will come home to Jesus. That's what we want at the end of the day. Dr. J, thank you so much as always. What do you have for us today? No. We've been talking about the fact that there is no water there. Right. That was That's damaging in and of itself. When there's no water, there is no food, no food, no man, no man or woman, no towns, no towns, no cities, no cities, no civilization, no civilization, no history. That's in and of itself bad enough. But back a number of years ago in the last uh, last century, it seems like a long years ago when I say it that way, but remember to Dr. Patricia Corona, who's one of our heroines, and she was the one that wrote the book, Meccan Trade and the Rise of Islam. And she talked about the trade route uh, that was introduced, the whole theory of the trade route, called the trade route theory by Montgomery Watt back in the last century. And she was started confronting it for a reason. Now let's put up the, let's put up the slide. And I wanna show you what Mecca looks like from that topographical slide that I showed you in the last segment. Here's that topographical, one of them. And this one is startling because it's, we're going to show you where that trade route goes along the topography. So let's, this is mm -hmm. the isolation of Mecca on the topography. And what Patricia Corona was saying absolutely has now been borne out, but she didn't have the maps that we have today. Back in the 1980s, they didn't have these kind of maps, so she, wasn't, she didn't have that at her fingertips. So let's take a look at this map here and let's put Aden. There's Aden down there at the south. So here you see Aden down that's here. That's in Yemen. Yeah. That's in Yemen. And that's where the, the trade would come across from India, came across the Arabian Sea, and came down to here. And we'd taken off goods here, according to the trade route theory. It's not according to drone. And then from Aden, it went up to Sana. There's Sana there. And then from Sana to Najran, there's Najran there. And from Najran up to Taif, there's Taif there. And then from Taif up to Yathrib, or what is today called Medina there. And then from Yathrib, it went on up to Tabuk, and then from Tabuk up Petra, or before it began, and then of course, we have Gaza up in the north. Now, so that is the trade route that, uh, with Petra there, that is the trade route that the standard Islamic narrative talks about, that Montgomery Watt referred to. Where's Mecca? Well, Mecca's not on it. Why? Well, it's where this red star is. That's where Mecca is. See where that red star is right and, uh, down there? Hopefully people can see us. If you can uh, uh, put the camera on us, folks, so people can see where Mecca is. Right down there. So right there. And and, and I want to emphasize what uh, Dr. J is talking about here. The standard Islamic narrative that I grew up believing in is that there is a trade route that goes north and south. In other words, Mecca was such a prominent trade center that trades coming from south will pass through it. Trades coming from north were tra passed through it, and so on and so forth. That's where Dr. J is coming from. And Dr. Patricia Coron said, hold on a minute. In order to go from here, you have to go then down off the western plateau, come down to here, and then come back up to Yathrib, 
and then from up there Tabuk and Khaybar will be here, then Tabuk, then Petra, then Gaza, and then off to the Mediterranean Sea. But she didn't have what we now have today. I want to show you another topographical map. This one is even more important because it shows you exactly the topography of just Saudi Arabia. This is just Saudi Arabia, okay? Right, and even the other one was clear. There are mountains. Why would you subject camels and animals to the risk of going up and down? Well, let's show it first. Yeah. Before you do that, let's show you before that conclusion. So here is Aden. It's down in Yemen, so it's not in Saudi Arabia. That's why right. it's off the, the Arabian map. And of course, same with Sana. It's there in Yemen down here. Uh, then we get to Najan, which is right on the border. And you're coming up to Taif. Taif is still, now you can see, there is a, can you see there, the, topographically, there is distinct right. mountain. You're up on top of a mountain. To get to Yathrib, you continue along the mountain there. You continue up to Tabuk and you come up to Petra, which is in Jordan, so it's off the map there uh, up in Jordan. By the way, I know where Taif is. Taif is a high resort up at the top of a mountain. Even today, there are highways that take you all the way up. Okay. Yeah. So where's Mecca? There's right Mecca. There. Bingo. It's down off. Now you can see topographically. Patricia Crone was exactly right. Even the 1980s when they didn't have this kind of mapping available at that time. Can you see it's down off the plateau? So they'd have to come down this way to get to Mecca. Then they have to go a thousand meters back up to get up to Yathrib. This is 3,000 feet difference between these two. Right. Why in the world would they go all the way down to a place that didn't have water? If it doesn't have water, it doesn't have vegetation. You would need vegetation for camels. You need to be able to water them. You need to feed them. There have to be people there. People have to survive. How can you survive if there's no water there? We're going to get to that because people have come back to me and say, aha, there is the Zum Zum well there, Mr. Smith. You don't know what you're talking about. The Zum Zum. Hold on to that. That's coming up in another episode. We're going to shut down that theory really quick. But I just want to show you the topographical map that proves that Patricia Corona has been vindicated. So look at this map and you can see it is not on the Western Plateau. That is where you noticed it being last time you talked talked about these, uh, these places where vegetation, those are called oases. These are oases along the trade route, but right. not including Mecca. So the question to my um, viewers right now, and especially our Muslim viewers, which one will make more sense to have just boats and ships parked at each of these locations, and then camels can take you know things all the way to some of these uh, cities or towns or centers? Or to have animals riding on top of mountains going up and down with no water whatsoever, vegetations, and so on and so forth. I think it's uh, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure this out. Well, actually, we actually shut this one down as well. Remember, yeah. we talked about this earlier. Because if you want to go up the Red Sea, which is up here, over along here, the Red Sea, notice all the trade that went on the Red Sea was on the western coast. Exactly. They're in what is today Eritrea and Sudan and Egypt. They're all on the western coast. We talked about those five cities. And the reason why those five cities were used, because they all had water. Where there's water, there's vegetation. Where there's vegetation, there are people. Where there are people, there are towns. Where there are towns, there are cities. Where there's cities. Their civilization, there is history. History is all up on the western coast, nothing on the eastern coast. One reason why? Because there is no water. There's only one port that we knew about that from the 7th century that existed, and it's right down here. It's called Yanbu, and Yanbu is the port that actually uh, uh, that gives the nourishes Yathrib. Yathrib needed Yanbu. And in Arabic, I mean, just, just if you were to tell me as an Arab speaker, without knowing that it's a city, uh, you would say, what do you think the word Yanbu could mean, I will say it could mean that something is gushing out. Something. Maybe there is water that is coming out. Without looking, I mean, without knowing what are you talking about. So there is a possibility the name was associated with the fact that there is a spring of water or something to that extent. Or there is water around it or close by. Okay. Now let's get to your city. Your city is called Jeddah. And it would be around here, this so, area. Just right in that area there. That's right. Jeddah is where you grew up. Jeddah is the city you know of. That's Jeddah right. does have water today. It does, of course. I mean, it's a port city also. Okay. Yeah. Did it exist at the time of Muhammad? Well, I think you and I talk about that, the fact that it wasn't built until later as a gateway into Mecca. Dr. Right. Gerald Haunting, who's done the, the authority, he's done the authoritative work on Jeddah. He says very clearly that Jeddah didn't exist until the 8th century, which means it was introduced, it was created to accommodate Mecca. Mecca needed water, and so they needed to have a place that could bring the water to them, and so they needed a port city, and that's why Jeddah was then constructed in order to feed and also to water the, the place that had no water and no feed, and that was Mecca. 
Yeah, people can go to Fonder Films as well uh, to be able to uh, gain more insights when it comes to those important, by the way, videos. We're not doing this for show. These are very, very, very important discoveries. And I tell you, I mean, if, if I was still uh, a Muslim today, I'd be probably disturbed by these findings because you have just shattered all of my traditional historical knowledge about my faith, its origin, and its affiliation with such a prominent town known as Mecca. This is why this is crucial for our Muslim friends, more so than anybody else, to please examine the evidence. We're inviting you to examine the evidence. In fact, we're inviting you to challenge us by presenting facts, not emotions, facts. And I say this, Dr. J, because I get a lot of attacks from Muslims that you don't know what you're talking about. Okay, well, show me what do you think I need to know. These are logical basically arguments that we're raising. That's why it's important. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. J. Thank you to, for your work and the work of your team. And I hope everyone is enjoying this. What are we going to talk about next time? Now we're going to ask the qu question that comes up after that. Mm -hmm. If it has no water, if it's totally isolated, then does it have a history? If you say it doesn't have a history, how can we prove that? What I'm going to do next, I'm going to be asking all the different civilizations around there, all the different kingdoms. I'm going to ask to see whether they know about this place, Mecca. Let's question that. Let's query that and see if anybody has heard of this place. Let's look and see where these kingdoms are. Let's look where these civilizations are and ask that question. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. Until next time, have a blessed day.